Thor, Loki, and Thialfi continued their journey to the east, always confident in the belief that Thor was superior to the giants. With his mighty hammer, Mjolnir, he had even defeated the fearsome Hrungnir. However, this time would be different. During their stay at the giant Utgard Loki's abode, even the mightiest of gods faced a stern test. On their journey, they spent a night at Thialfi's father's home, which was near the border of Utgard. They recalled their first visit to these farmers, where they had received a warm welcome and ample hospitality. In gratitude, Thor had slaughtered and prepared his two goats to feed everyone. Once the goats were cooked, Thor invited the farmer and his family to dinner as a token of his appreciation for their hospitality. He laid the goat hides by the hearth and instructed the farmer and his family to place the bones on them, ensuring that the bones remained intact. After a sumptuous feast, everyone retired for the night. Thor rose before daybreak, dressed himself, grabbed his hammer, and blessed the hides. The goats, named Toothgnasher and Toothgrinder, awoke, but only one of them was completely healthy. The other limped on its hind leg. Thor examined the leg, grew angry, and accused the farmer or one of his family members of damaging one of the bones. However, no one confessed to this mistake. Thor's gaze grew dark, and his eyes narrowed to thin slits. The mere sight of him was so intimidating that the farmer felt as though he could be struck by lightning at any moment. His wife and children were also filled with fear. Thor's grip on the hammer became so tight that his knuckles turned white. The inhabitants of the house cried out in terror. Finally, Thialfi confessed that in a moment of weakness and greed, he had secretly broken one of the goat's thigh bones to taste the marrow. The farmer and his family pleaded with Thor for mercy offering everything they possessed as compensation, their home, their land, and themselves. Thialfi's sister tried to defend her brother by pointing out how tempting the goat's meat had been. She hoped that this explanation would mitigate Thor's anger. Thor recognized the sincere remorse of the farmer and his family. He looked at them sternly once more, but then his anger subsided. As a sign of his forgiveness, he took Thialfi and his sister Roskva into his service, which the farmer had offered as compensation. From then on, they served Thor faithfully and accompanied him on all his adventures. During this visit, Thor once again planned to slaughter his goats, but the farmer had already prepared fresh meat for the meal. They celebrated together, eating and drinking late into the night. The next morning, as the sun rose, Thor left his goats with the farmer and continued his journey with his companions. They first crossed a lake by boat and then sailed through a strait. After leaving the shore behind and walking for a while, they reached the great forest of Utgard. They journeyed through the dense forest the entire day until darkness fell. Thialfi carried Thor's provisions bag, from which most of the supplies had already been consumed. When it became pitch dark, they searched for a suitable place to spend the night and came across a large hall. This hall was as wide at one end as it was long. Exhausted from their long journey, they lay down and fell into a deep sleep. However, in the middle of the night, they were abruptly awakened by an earthquake. The ground heaved and buckled, cracks formed, and the building seemed on the verge of collapsing. Thor immediately jumped to his feet and called out to his companions. They groped through the darkness and found a narrow side chamber in the middle of the hall. Thor positioned himself at the entrance, ready to fend off any intruders, while the others, gripped by fear, hid in the room. With a firm grip, Thor held the shaft of his hammer, which always seemed a little too short for his stature, prepared to defend against any threat. There was no further sign of danger, only the loud rushing and rumbling in the distance. As morning broke, Thor stepped out of the hall and discovered a giant man nearby lying in the forest. He was in deep slumber, and his snoring was so loud that the trees nearby seemed to tremble. Thor immediately realized that the noise that had awakened them during the night had come from this giant. He wanted to punish the disruptor of their rest, and he put on his strength belt, preparing to swing his hammer, Mjolnir. 
But before Thor could strike, the giant woke up and quickly sat up. He was so enormous that Thor, despite his usual bravery, hesitated to confront him. When Thor asked for his name, the giant introduced himself as Skrymir. I need not ask who you are, said Skrymir. You are surely Thor, but perhaps you have taken my glove? Skrymir stretched out his hand and picked up a giant-sized mitten. At that moment, Thor realized that they had spent the night inside this mitten, believing it to be a hall. Skrymir asked if he could accompany Thor. Thor dared not refuse him as a travel companion, so Skrymir opened his provision sack and began to eat breakfast. Thor and his companions sat apart. We should combine our supplies and have a shared meal, Skrymir offered. Thor thought that he and his companions could benefit from Skrymir's abundant provisions, so he agreed. Skrymir bundled all the provisions together and carried it on his back. They continued their journey through the forest, with Skrymir leading the way, taking giant strides. Thialfi, known for his swiftness, gasped and struggled not to fall behind. Thor, accustomed to long hikes, felt the hunger and fatigue in his bones. Loki, not known for his endurance, was visibly exhausted and irritated by the relentless march without a break. As the sun began to approach the horizon, Thor looked at Skrymir and called out, Shouldn't we take a break and have something to eat? However, Skrymir, with the bundle of provisions on his back, seemed unwilling to stop. He replied, We will continue until we find a suitable place to rest. Thor sighed, took a deep breath, and continued on his way, determined not to lose sight of the giant. Loki muttered to himself, visibly dissatisfied with the situation, while Thialfi focused on keeping up. It was a long and tiring day, and everyone hoped to find a place to rest soon. When it was long past dark, Skrymir found a sleeping spot under an oak tree and said to Thor, Take the bundle of provisions and eat your fill. Skrymir lay down next to the oak in the grass, sleeping soundly, with the oak leaves rustling above him. Thor and his companions had not eaten or drunk anything during the day and had developed a tremendous appetite. However, no matter how hard the mightiest of the Aesir tried, he couldn't even loosen a strap of the provisions bundle. Thor became angry. He furrowed his brows, glared, gripped his hammer with both hands, and struck Skrymir on the head. Skrymir woke up, and as a leaf fell onto his forehead, he asked, Have you eaten and drunk enough? Why aren't you asleep yet? We are preparing for the night's rest, grumbled Thor, and with that, Skrymir was satisfied. Thor and his companions lay down under a beech tree, listening in the direction where Skrymir slept. But once again, Skrymir's eyes shot open and he sat up. He looked at Thor and asked, Did a leaf just fall on me again? Why are you standing there, Thor? Thor, stunned and frustrated, replied, It's almost dawn, and it's time to wake up. Skrymir agreed and started to prepare for the day, leaving Thor and his companions puzzled and exhausted. As they continued their journey with Skrymir, Thor and his group faced one unusual challenge after another, each time realizing that their giant companion was not as he appeared. The adventures with Skrymir, along with their previous encounters in Utgard, left Thor and his companions with a sense of wonder and humility. They eventually parted ways with the enigmatic giant, who had guided them through a series of perplexing trials. Thor and his companions resumed their travels, their experiences with giants and magical challenges serving as valuable lessons about the nature of the world they inhabited. They were now better prepared to face the many adventures that awaited them in the land of the gods and giants. Skrymir awoke, rubbing his temple, sat up and asked, Are there birds in the tree above me? It felt like a twig fell on my head. Are you awake? It's time to get up and dress. Thor, weakened by hunger and thirst, couldn't respond. He gazed at Skrymir in disbelief, unable to comprehend how the giant could speak so nonchalantly after enduring such powerful blows from Mjolnir. 
Loki and Tjalfi, who had been observing the situation from a safe distance, cautiously approached. They were equally astonished by the giant's resilience. Screamir stood up and reached for the provisions bundle. Instead of loosening the bones inside, as Thor and his companions had hoped, he held the bundle in his hand and said, The path to Utgard Loki's castle is not far. I overheard your whispered conversations. You claim I am a man of considerable stature, but when you enter his castle, you will witness even greater things. Now I advise you to restrain your boastful words. Utgard, Loki's followers, tolerate no arrogance. Thor tapped the provisions bundle with his hammer and said, Listen, Skrymir. Skrymir pretended not to notice and continued speaking. However, Thor persisted. If you fear, then fear and turn back. That would be the best course. But if you wish to proceed, go east. I will take the path to the north, towards those mountains towering up there in the clouds. Skrymir hoisted the bundle of provisions onto his back, turned, and strode into the forest. Thor and his companions watched as the giant disappeared among the trees with their supplies. Then the three, hungry and thirsty, found themselves alone in the middle of the forest. They had no choice but to make their way to the nearby castle of Utgard Loki. By midday, they spotted in the distance a wall made of logs so high that they had to tilt their heads back to see over it. As they approached, they found the gate before the castle locked. Thor attempted to bend or pull the bars aside, but it was in vain. Thor and his companions exerted all their strength to open the gate. Loki and Thialfi eventually managed to squeeze through the bars. Thor, with his powerful body, required a bit more time to do so. Finally, the castle gate swung open, and the three entered the grand hall. Many men sat on two benches on either side of the room, towering even over Skrymir. In the middle of a large throne was the high seat for the mightiest of the giants, their king, Utgard Loki. The hall was filled with a stifling silence until Utgard Loki slowly began to speak. Welcome, Thor of Asgard. I have heard of your arrival, he said with a voice that resonated deep and echoing throughout the room. And who are these two accompanying you? This is Loki and this is Thialfi, Thor replied, pointing to each of them. Utgard. Loki nodded. I have heard much about all of you. Why are you here? Thor took a deep breath and answered. We are in search of food and shelter. The giant Skrymir took our supplies. A low murmur went through the hall, and some of the giants chuckled softly. Utgard Loki smiled, a cool, calculating smile. Well, if you wish to stay here, you must prove yourselves. There are no free handouts in my castle. Thor nodded resolutely. What must we do? Utgard Loki leaned back in his high seat pondering for a moment. There will be three trials. If you pass them, you can stay as long as you like. Thor and his companions exchanged determined glances. They were ready to face any challenge to find food and shelter. Loki, as hungry as a wolf, stepped forward. He said, In this hall, there is no one who can eat as quickly as I can. Utgard Loki replied, If you are so ravenous, let us see. He called a man from his place near the door, where those who had made the least impression sat. This man was also named Loki and stepped into the center of the room to compete with the other Loki. Then a large wooden trough was brought in, placed on the hall floor and filled with freshly slaughtered meat. Loki ate from one end of the trough and the giant Loki ate from the other end. Both devoured the meat as quickly as possible, meeting precisely in the middle. However, while Ace Loki gnawed all the meat off the bone, Giant Loki had swallowed both the meat and bones. Everyone could see that Ace Loki had lost the contest. Utgard Loki then asked Thialfi, And what are you good at? Thialfi replied, I can run against anyone the king designates. Utgard Loki said he would need to be well prepared if he wanted to succeed here and left, followed by the others. 
On a level field, a race course was prepared, and Utgard Loki called forth a little fellow named Hoogie. In the first race, the small Hoogie was so far ahead that he was already coming back toward the post serving as the finish line when Thialfi reached it. Utgard Loki said, If you want to win, you must move your legs faster. But so far, no guest has surpassed our swiftness. In the second race, the little Hoogie reached the post while Thialfi was still a considerable distance from the finish line. Thialfi ran as fast as he could, but Utgard Loki said, Thialfi runs well, but I doubt he will win the contest. The third race will decide. In the third race, Thialfi ran as fast as he had ever run before. However, when the little Hoogie reached the post and returned, Thialfi had not even covered half the distance. He had lost the contest. Furious over his companion's defeats, Thor shook his beard and sought to restore his honor through his own deeds. The greatest drinker of all worlds was overcome by a burning thirst, and he proposed a drinking contest. He said, No one in this hall can empty a horn faster than I can. Utgard Loki called for a servant and had a horn filled with mead, the usual drink of the inhabitants here. He said, A good drinker empties the horn in one gulp. Some manage it in two, but none among my followers needs more than three sips. The horn turned out to be not particularly wide, but quite long. Thor drank with great enthusiasm, taking huge gulps. When his thirst seemed quenched and he could drink no more, he said he needed to pause just once. Looking into the horn, Thor found it still abundantly filled. Utgard Loki acted surprised and said, well drunk, but unfortunately, not enough. Judging by the drinking songs of the birds, I expected you to be a much greater drinker. For his second attempt, Thor once again tried to empty the horn, but he only managed to raise the tip of the horn a bit. When he finally had to stop and looked into the horn, it appeared to have decreased even less than the first time. Utgard Loki asked, What's wrong, Thor? If you don't empty the horn on your third try, your thirst must be enormous or else we won't praise you as highly as the other guests. Thor accepted the challenge, downing the horn in his anger and drinking more than he had likely ever drunk before. When he finally set the horn down, it was slightly less filled than before. Thor marveled at how little the liquid had diminished despite his powerful drinking and returned the horn. Utgard Loki remarked that the god's power might not be as great as they claimed, and asked Thor if he wished to prove a, himself in other competitions. Thor replied, I will demonstrate in my strength in other ways. I believe that had I drunk as mightily in Asgard, I would have succeeded. What competition do you offer me? Utgard Loki replied, Young boys sometimes play with a cat in our land and try to lift it. Just because you were inferior in the last competition, I will make you this offer. Shortly after, a large gray cat leaped into the center of the hall. Thor attempted to lift the cat with his hand, but the cat resisted and arched its back as Thor tried to lift it. Only when Thor exerted all his strength and stretched himself was he able to lift the cat slightly off the ground. That was all Thor could achieve in this competition. Utgard Loki said, I expected this outcome. The cat is quite large, and compared to my men, Thor is a dwarf. Thor was very angry about this humiliation and said, Do you call me small too? Then send someone to wrestle with me. Utgard Loki looked around the hall and said, Even for the weakest of my men, this would be child's play. Try wrestling with a woman. I'll call my old nurse, who has defeated men as strong as you. Soon after, an extremely old-looking woman entered the hall. Thor found it extremely humiliating to have to wrestle a woman, especially after his previous defeats. Nonetheless, he agreed to this undignified fight and did not doubt his victory. However, the harder Thor tried to grip, the firmer the old woman stood, like a pillar that he futilely shook. She even attempted to trip Thor, and they struggled fiercely. They tossed each other back and forth until the old woman managed to force Thor to touch the ground with one foot. Utgard Loki approached, ended the fight, and said that it was no longer necessary to wrestle one of his men. 
Thor had already refused further challenges. By now, it had become dark, and Utgard Loki instructed Thor and his companions to take their seats for the night and invited them to a feast. The giants drank and roared so loudly that the flames in the hall flickered. Despite being hungry and thirsty, Thor and his companions barely touched the beer and food. Before sunrise, they rose, prepared themselves, and were ready to continue their journey. Utgard Loki bid them farewell warmly and gifted each of them a tablecloth with ample food and drink. After their morning meal, the guests departed from Utgard Loki's castle, and he accompanied them to the outskirts of Thor's castle. Before parting ways, he asked Thor, Have you encountered anyone mightier than I? Thor replied, Indeed, I have never encountered anyone mightier. From which world do you hail? Utgard Loki explained, Since you now stand before my castle, I shall reveal the truth to you. I would have let you in anyway. Had I known of your immense strength that nearly brought us to ruin, I would have barred my gate. I deceived your senses. He admitted that he was the one who emerged from the woods, masquerading as Skrymir, while fastening the provisions bag with enchanted iron knots. Utgard Loki continued, You struck me three times with your hammer. The first blow was the weakest but still potent enough to shatter my head. Yet, I placed a mountain in front of me to shield myself. Do you see that mountain over there with the three deep valleys? Those are your hammer's marks and the deepest one is from your final strike. Utgard Loki also confessed to deceiving the senses of Thor's companions. Loki was indeed hungry, and Thialfi was genuinely fast, but their opponents were illusions. The Loki Loki faced was the raging, voracious fire that consumed not only flesh, but also bone and meat. So, Thor and his companions had faced illusions and deceptions crafted by Utgard Loki himself. Utgard Loki continued, And the one you raced against, Hugi, means thought. Even the fastest runner couldn't catch him, for he was my thought. When you lifted the horn and actually decreased its contents, it seemed like a miracle because the end of the horn was invisibly connected to the sea. Go to the shore and see how the water level has dropped, due to your continuous drinking. That's called low tide. Utgard Loki went on, Even when you lifted the cat, I thought it was impossible. The creature appeared as a cat to you, but it was the Midgard serpent that encircles the earth. We all trembled in fear when you struggled, and the monster had to be raised a bit from the ground. It seemed like the sky was within your reach. Even in the wrestling match, it was a great marvel that you resisted for so long and were only brought to your knees with one leg. No one can defeat Ellie, which is old age. Utgard Loki explained that he would defend his castle with illusions and other arts against which Thor had no power. Thor, angered and wanting to strike, found Utgard Loki had already vanished. Thor turned to his companions to depart, but they saw only vast green fields and no wall with bulwark battlements. Thor returned home with his companions, concerned about the fate of Asgard and Midgard. However, on the way back, he resolved to have a rematch with the Midgard serpent, which would become his principal foe. Soon enough, an opportunity for this arose. Unity for 